Hello, welcome everyone to this uh, mini lecture about virtual memory. So what is a virtual memory? Well, if we start by looking at the, the pyramid here uh, of hierarchies of memories, at the top we have really fast memories but pretty expensive ones. So we have for example a cache and in this case we have two different levels of caches. One L1 cache that is faster and smaller and then one L2 cache that is slower uh, but bigger. And then typically we have the main memory but sometimes we want to swap out some of the data to another memory for example a physical hard drive and this is when when the virtual memory comes in place. So basically virtual memory makes use of the hard drive which is really slow but large and pretty inexpensive. So why do we care about virtual memory? Well basically there are two main reasons. So it can give the illusion of, of being a very big memory so that each program believes that everything it has all access to the whole memory like a huge memory even though it has a very small physical memory. And another thing is that it gives memory protection so that when different programs are executed or running on, in the operating system, uh, each of them believes that they have a huge memory, but they are sharing the same physical memory and they cannot access each other's memory. So there is a memory protection between them. Okay, so virtual memories are quite similar to caches, but we use a kind of different terminology. So, in the case of a cache, we talk about a cache block. A similar thing is called a page in a virtual memory. And the pages are typically much larger than a block. So, a typical page in a virtual memory is like 4 uh, kilobytes. We have a block size, then we talk about the page size in virtual memory. We have a block offset, and we talk about the page offset in virtual memory. When we say that we have a miss in the cache, we say that we have a page fault. And there is also something called virtual page numbers in virtual memory. And that corresponds to a tag in a cache. So if you understand the basic ideas of a cache, the translation into virtual memory is not that difficult. So in a virtual memory, we are translating from virtual addresses into physical addresses. So here we see that we have a lot of virtual addresses. That means that, for example, for a program, it can access maybe 4 gigabytes of memory if it's a 32-bit machine. Then some of these addresses are mapped to the, phys to the physical address space. So the physical address space would be uh, the address space in the main memory. But the virtual address space is much larger than the physical address space. So some of, these, some of this information that is stored in the program cannot be stored in the physical memory. So then it's stored instead in the hard drive. So you can view a virtual memory as a cache where you get cache hits when the actual content is stored in the physical address or in the physical memory. And if you have to go down to the slow memory and access the data from a hard drive, you have a miss. And this miss, again, is not called a cache miss, but rather a page fault. So the process of translating from virtual addresses to physical addresses, that's called, that is called address translation. And this translation actually acts as a fully, uh, fully associative cache for the virtual memory. But as we know from the theory about caches, it's pretty expensive or very expensive to implement a fully associative cache in hardware. So that is why it's not only done in hardware, it's also done in the software. Uh, and that is done by the operating system. So we have something that's called a memory managed unit that is handling this. So we have what is called page table. And this page table basically explains which virtual page number 
is mapped to which physical page number. And it's stored, the table itself is actually stored in, in, in main memory. So it's, it's kind of a, a big array with this mapping. So we can see here that we have all the virtual page numbers here going up. And then in this table, we store the actual physical page number in the table. And then there is also a valid bit. So if the valid bit is one, it means that this particular virtual page number or page is stored in physical memory. If it's valid bit, if the valid bit is zero, it means that it's not stored in physical memory, but it's stored in on the hard drive. So you have to have a fate, you get a page fault, uh, and then you have to go and grab the data from the hard drive. So the address translation step is done in two parts. So we first have here a page offset part that is kind of similar to the byte offset in a cache. So you don't need to translate that part of the virtual address. It's basically the same. So in this case, in this example, we have a 12 bits uh, page offset. So the translation is instead here from the virtual page number VPN to the physical page number PPN. And this is the translation here. So this translation is done by going to this page table, looking up the virtual page number, this one, and checking which line it is here, and then getting the page, the physical page number, which will be this part of the address. And a prerequisite is that the valid bit is set to one. So as we said, no translation is needed for the offset. So this is done in what's called the memory management unit, the MMU. So the operating system itself is really responsible for updating this page table. So it, the operating system is, that's a piece of software that is writing to this memory, updating this table. And it's also uh, responsible for moving data from the physical memory to the hard drive and the opposite. So this is done by software. The problem is, of course, that there we can get a serious performance problem by using this approach. Because if we access first the page table using software, we have one lookup to get the data, and then we can translate this address and then grab the data from a physical memory. So even if we have a hit, it's in the physical memory, we need to do two memory accesses, which can be pretty expensive. So the solution to this problem is called translation look aside buffer, the TLB. And this is basically like a cache that caches the latest pages. So it's, it's implemented in hardware and it's a fully associative cache that holds a number of entries. It could be, for example, 16 entries or up to 512 entries, depending on the computer. So by doing this, we are caching the pages that are used a lot. As it turns out, there is a lot of temporal and spatial locality. So when we imp if we implement the TLB, we typically get a very high hit rate. Around 99% is reported in the literature. So this means that we get a very low overhead by using page tables in combination with TLBs. So some key takeaway points. So virtual memory enables a very large address space where the mostly used pages are stored in physical memory and the not so commonly used pages are stored on the hard drive. Another very important thing with the virtual memory is the protection between different programs. So each of the programs believes basically that they have their own address space and they cannot interfere with each other. So that's it. Thank you for listening.